Hey everyone, welcome to episode lucky 13 of What's Up Biscot Yarns with Julie. I am your host, Julie, filming from our store in North Vale, New Jersey. Now, for those of you who have been watching this channel, you might notice that there is something a little bit different in today's setting. And that notably is the wall behind me. I am set up at a different spot within the same store. Uh, it's not a yarn wall, more like yarn cubbies. Uh, because the spot where I usually do the filming from the yarn wall uh, is being reconfigured as we speak because uh, we needed to make more room to accommodate for uh, the new colorways that we have dyed. So um, to get out of their way, I'm setting up shop in a different location. Uh, for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. I'm glad that you have found us, found this channel. Uh, take a quick second to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss more content from us. Um, and if you're not familiar with Biscot Yarns, let me give you a quick skinny behind the company. So Biscot Yarns is a local yarn store and there are five locations, one in the States in New Jersey where I'm at, and then there are four other shops in Canada where we are headquartered. Um, in each of the stores, we carry both our own line of yarns as well as yarns by other manufacturers, such as Barocco, which the stuff behind me is from Barocco, most of them. I think, yeah, they're actually all of them are Barocco behind me. Um, also Sandis Garn, we have Cascade Yarns, we have Rowan, Noro, um, Malabrigo, so on and so forth. So we have a really healthy selection of yarns by other manufacturers, as well as the yarns under our own label. So for the yarns that are under our own label, we have like a whole bunch of different lines from like fingering way to, I think at the moment, the heaviest way that we carry is uh, worsted. But uh, speaking of just a fingering way, uh, we have several different lines uh, just under that way of yarn. Maybe that's why we're kind of popular among sock knitters. Um, but anyway, so, oh, and all of the yarns that's under the Biscot Yarns label, uh, all the colors are hand dyed in our studio in Canada. And there are many different variations of coloration. So you have your solid, semi-solid, self-striping, uh, variegated and everything in between. So uh, you will not be bored with, you know, the color selections. Um, if you're looking for something muted, something loud, we have like neon colors, uh, something more fun, uh, like you name it, chances are we have it. But the important thing to keep in mind is that we are hand dyed, which means it's not like from mass manufacturers where they, you know, dunk their their woolens or their yarns, you know, in a big bath, uh, mass produced like, you know, I, I don't know how many, like maybe hundreds at a time. I don't know. I haven't fact checked that. But, you know, with the hand dyed uh, folks like the Scott Yarns, um, they're done in small batch. So uh, when you are shopping for yarn for a project uh, that require multiple, uh, multiple skeins of the same color, um, it is advised that you be careful checking the dye lot. I mean, I suppose that's true whether you buy it from small, small batch like Biscot Yarns or mass manufacturers, uh, you always wanna check the dye lot to make sure that you are within the same dye lot so that there is little to no variation between the different batches, even though they're the same color, if that makes sense. Okay, so that was a lot. <laughs> uh, what is in the uh, playlist for today? Uh, this number I'm wearing, uh, the shawl that is to my right, we have, of course, a sock pattern to talk about, and also a child's tunic. Uh, or dress, however you want to dress it. So those are the four things on the playlist for today. Um, so first up, let's talk about the sweater that I'm wearing. Um, it is called the Brick Sweater. Take a wild guess why it is called such. Uh, <laughs> 
Uh, so the brick pattern, let's talk a little bit about the pattern first now that we're talking about it. So uh, this brick pattern, this motif, uh, the mosaic motif, um, is done by... There are several different ways you can do this kind of uh, motif, by the way, which we're going to talk about another way in this shawl in a moment. But for this one, um, you basically do like a one extra yarn over when you do a knit stitch. So you know how when you do a knit, you put your right needle through the stitch and then you wrap it around and then you pop it out, so on and so forth. So um, one of the process in making the mosaic in this, uh, in this pattern, you pop the right needle into the stitch, you yarn over twice, and then you pop it out. Um, so that's one way. I'm not going to like elaborate too much, but just to give you kind of like a preview as to how this is done, um, amongst other steps. Um, oh, construction. So this sweater is uh, constructed from the top down, but unlike most of the sweaters that we have talked about in previous episodes, this one is done, start with the front neck. I think a lot of what we talked about before is from the back piece and then it expands widthwise and lengthwise. But for this one, it's the other way around. You do the front first and then you grow it widthwise and lengthwise, uh, you know, using short rows and such for the shoulder and for the neck. Um, and then you knit down, separate for the, the armhole, the arm side, and then you knit down and then you work on this fun motif here with two different colorways. Um, and then for the edges, let me come to you again. Um, you can see that it's a I cord bind off and on all the edges. So it's really nice and tidy. It really ties in uh, neatly with the whole design concept of the sweater. And you can also see that the sleeve here is three quarters. I used to be really annoyed by three quarter sleeve, but now I kind of like it. Uh, for no rhyme or reason. Uh, I think this sweater, uh, the design of this is really versatile. I would like to think that it kind of looks good with what I'm wearing. I'm just wearing shorts because it's still hot. It's August um, and I have a cami underneath. So it's, it's like this. Uh, it would also look good, I think, if you were wearing something high-waisted, like high-waisted jeans, it would look good with jeans too. Um, or if to totally switch gear, it would also work if you have a dress underneath and then throw this over it. Uh, so you could go casual and you could go like a little bit dressy, you know, like up casual or whatever. So you definitely have options. I think this piece is fun. Um, you know, there are some not boring, but like mindless knitting. And then there is some aspect of like fun knitting, get you engaged a little bit. And also the versatility in terms of style. Uh, of this piece, so I think it's worth it. Um, let's talk about the yarn and the specs and stuff like that. Uh, this one is knitted with uh, Louise Robert Collection DK Pure, and these are the three colorways. Um, I will list the specific colors and yarns and you know the pattern downloads and stuff like that in the description box for those of you who is new. Everything that I talk about in this episode, in all the episodes, I will list everything in the description so you can easily reference to it. Um, so that's that. And the DK Pure is made of 90% superwash merino wool and 10% of silk. Um, it is not scratchy on me. I've been wearing it for a little while now. It's really comfortable. It, it has a little bit of weight to it, but it's not like heavy, you know? Uh, it, it's substantial enough that I know I'm wearing something, but it's not scratchy, it's not heavy, it's comfortable. Um, the pattern has seven sizes, even though like the torso is like super wide, but that, I mean, that's the style, right? So even though it's really roomy, uh, it is still charted for seven different sizes. Um, and the length is 18 inches. And for the larger sizes, it will go up, go down or at the length to 19 and a half. So it's from 18 to 19 and a half um, in terms of the crop top length. Uh, what else is there? The gauge is 19 stitches per four inches. You do the math. I may be Asian, but I'm no good with math. <laughs> uh, and then uh, it is worked with uh, US 7 uh, knitting needles or 4.5 millimeters. Um, yes, so that's 
pattern number one. Uh, let's move on to pattern number two. Uh, how about this piece to my right here? This shawl is called the Bain de Soleil, uh, which means bathing in the sun, like sunbathing, I guess. So this one is a design by Louise Robert, and this was not the original colorway that she had uh, planned for this shawl. Um, she was inspired by sunbathing, <laughs> uh, the sunshine. Um, because around the time, this was uh, designed several years ago, um, and spring, I guess, was coming late, and uh, in Canada, it was like a little bit dreary for that time of, uh, for that time in the year, and she was longing for some sunshine, so she made her own sunshine. Uh, I'll throw a picture up here so you can see the original colorways, which scream sunny days. Um, but here there, is, there are several different uh, colorways, like kits that we have put together. Um, so the original Sunshine Way with the orange base, and then here this uh, model to my right, it's uh, pinkish. And I have taken the liberty to put together a set myself. Um, for those of you who've been watching uh, this channel, you know how I fret putting colors together. I am not a good color person. Um, I like to design, I, I design knitwear, but when it comes to marrying colors, I defer to my husband, uh, who is an artist and he has a really good eye for it. But I figure, hey, I gotta break out of my comfort zone, right? And I don't know, I just felt like putting things together. So you saw the, the original um, orange base uh, sh of the shawl. And then here you see the pink version. Uh, we have like this neon pink, like it's screaming pink at you, uh, but it's, you know, kind of tamed down by these two colors and some sparkles. And then here is my variation. Tell me if this is acceptable. Um, so in lieu of this, uh, like a speckled colorway, it would be this. Okay, and then here in, in lieu of the, the neon pink, it will be this purple. And then the grayish color with the sparkly will be this darker color. So I figure, um, when you're working on this brick motif, um, I'll bring it closer to the camera in a second. I figure that these two would go really well together, even though this fuzzy one isn't like screaming, but um, like, like, like screaming neon like this and the other kits that we have that you can check out the different colorways on our website. Um, this one is more tame and muted, but I figure this contrast, uh, it, it will work really well. Uh, because this is so light and this one is so dark, the darker one. Um, what do you think? Did I pass with my color <laughs> color combo? Um, so this shawl is knit with three different lines of Biscott Yarns yarn. Yes. Uh, let's start with this one is Hermione. It is 75% kit mohair and 25% silk. Um, you probably can't see the silk content in here, but you could for sure see the mohairiness, if that is a word. Uh, <laughs> and this is in the colorway lavender. And then next up, we have Fizz Whiz Biz. Say that 10 times fast. Fizz Whiz Biz. And you can see the sparkles in there. It's so much fun. It's like a little disco business. Um, and this one is 95% superwash merino and 5% of Stellinia silver, or like the sparkly business. Um, it is a really thin yarn, just so if you're curious, it's like 28 to 32 stitches to an inch, depending on what needle size you knit it with. So it's thin. Um, and then lastly, the flamel, um, I was, loving this in the last episode and here we are using this again uh 60 percent super super wash merino 20 percent nylon and 20 percent alpaca 
and can you see the the little fuzzy halo-y business um, it's not as pronounced as this because this has way more fuzzy goodness in it than this one this one is like 75 percent right and then this one is just 20 percent of the halo-y effect from the alpaca so that's the yarn um while i'm at it let's talk about uh the needle used to knit this shawl is us size six or four millimeter and the gauge it's a shawl so it's not like you have to meet it exactly but give or take 18 stitches per four inches so wait let me do the math so that's four and a half stitches to an inch yes <laughs> eight plus for julie Okay, so uh, now this shawl, uh, oh, let me give you the dimension. It, the length is, um, the, the wingspan is 75 inches and the height of it is 31 and a half inches. Um, let me take it off the mannequin and show you this is how it looks in this variation, color variation. And this is how wide it is. Let me throw it over myself. I'm still having the, thank you for asking, by the way, about my shoulder. Um, I have a frozen shoulder plus other arm ailment from over knitting. Um, I don't have that much mobility still, but it's a little bit better than before. I think I can reach a little farther, but I still can't, like this is how far I can raise my arm versus this one. So yeah. Anyway, um, so it's still awkward for me to like throw things on and stuff. So anyway, back to the shawl, enough about me. This is how long it is at the tail, um, but the neck is like way up. So it's pretty long. And then the wingspan is this wide and I can easily tie it like that um, with plenty of room to spare. I'm gonna take this off because it's hot. <laughs> Um, the construction of the shawl is from the top here. You knit like a little bit of stitches and then you grow, work your way down. You can see the spine, the lacy spine. Uh, you alternate the two colors here, the flamel and the fizz whiz biz, the, the sparkly one. So you alternate that and then you switch to just the flamel and do the uh, the lace work here, you switch back to add the, the sparkly one, uh, alternate rows, and then you go introduce the fun color, uh, the Herm uh, Hermione, um, the mohair and the silk, and then you go back to the stripe, and then here is the other brick motif, uh, this mosaic work. So for this one, the way that this pattern makes the, the brick, if you will, um, is by slip stitch. So you, you work the two color, you hold the two colors together because there are two colors in this section, uh, but you don't work the rows um, two at a time like color work, like, like stranded color work. Um, it's not fair aisle. So you would work one color and then you would slip the stitches um, uh, for the other color that needs to be worked and then you go back and then you do the other color way, if that makes sense. Um, anyway, so that's this. Oh, I, I'm not finished, I'm sorry. So <laughs> uh, after the breaks, you go back to um, the sparkly and then the the lace work here and then that's the end with a little bit of a pico stitching at the end so that's that it's called um mandesol i'll fix this later no i'll fix it now here looks good yes good job me Okay, so that's that. Let's move on to pattern number three. Hmm. Let's talk about this one. Um, bear with me one second. Let me pull it up. Andolin, girl's tunic. 
this sweet little number. Sorry, it's a little bit wrinkle. If you can believe it, we don't have a steamer in the shop. Uh, I was going to straighten this out before filming, but hey, we're not here to judge, right? So here is the tunic. Um, I see it like a dress. So I think it's, side note, I think it's really smart if you have to knit uh, a present for a baby girl or like a young child who's a girl, um, to knit them a dress because when they are younger or smaller, it's a dress, but they're gonna grow, <laughs> I hope. And uh, when they grow taller, then the dress obviously is going to shrink. But as it shrinks, then it becomes like an oversized top and then, you know, to just like a sweater or, or a tee or whatever, like, you know, depending on the top construction. So the designer called this a tunic but when I saw it, I thought it was a dress. It could be both, depending on like what size child is wearing this or how big the child is when they're wearing it. But my point is, like, I think you would get a lot of wear out of a dress when you when you buy or or make a dress for a girl, and then they have like a couple of years to grow, continue growing, and the piece will be shrinking with it, but still wearable. If that makes sense. Um, I remember I bought um, a dress for my daughter when she was a toddler. No, for her first birthday, I remember. I was shopping in Soho and this art, uh, this person was selling it, you know, at a, a craft event. And I bought two pieces from her. And when my daughter was one, I bought it for her birthday and she put one on and it was, it fell to her knee. But because the straps were adjustable, it was like a tie strap, then it, I just adjusted accordingly as she was growing and that dress that came down to her knee uh, eventually got up to her hip and it was like a really cool, like boho look, chic looking top. So that was that. <laughs> um, anyway, so my, that said baby girl is now 18, going to college very soon um okay so this dress there uh it is made with la douce mcm um here it is i have raved about this yarn before um i knit it i used this yarn to knit a baby blanket for a new baby in the family last winter last December so almost a year ago and I loved working with this yarn it's fingering way 80% uh, merino 10% nylon 10% cashmere um, and it's delicious so you use that to make that dress um, yes uh, the needle prescribed in this pattern is a U.S. size 2 or 2.75 millimeter or size to obtain gauge. And the gauge for this pattern is 29 stitches to 4 inches. You do the math. I'm not going to do the math for this one. <laughs> um, so that's that. And there are seven sizes for this pattern and the for the ages hmm it doesn't tell you the age isn't that funny give me a second does it say at the end with a schematic uh oh yes they do good 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 so uh this tunic uh, is sized for four years, like 4T. No, you don't say 4T anymore. So size four to uh, youth 16, 16 years old. Yes, so there is seven sizes going by two. So four, six, eight, ten multiples of twos from four to 16. Yes, okay, <laughs> I'm doing okay. Uh, so as I'm scrolling through the pattern, I can tell you that this pattern is both charted and it also has the written out instructions. Um, you start from the bottom up in the round and there are lace um, panels on either side. Again, sorry about the wrinkliness. Um, 
but focus on the fun stuff. So here are the two uh, lace, which is like work together. So you do a bit of stockinette and then you do the lace and then you go back to stockinette, yada, yada. And it's worked in a round, like I said. So as this is kind of like, you know, flares out and you're starting from here, then obviously you kind of do your decreases as you get up to the chest area. And you see how this is pleated. So if, if I hold it here, let me hang it on my arm. All right. So you can see that this is kind of pleated. Uh, so you will work that too uh, when you're up here. Um, and then it's also pleated in the back. It's kind of pretty. It's not like too pleated. It's like just one pleat and it, it falls really nicely. It's really cute. Um, so that's that. And oh, and the um, edging for this is the same as the sweater. Uh, the edging is an uh, I-cord. Uh, bind off, cast on and bind off. So it, again, it's, it's nice and tidy. Really, really neat edgings. So that's this pattern. And then we have one more, which is a sock pattern. I know you've been waiting for this and I saved the best for last. Um, this one is called Celeste. Um, and Celeste is a new pattern designed this year and here it is make this pretty um it is knitted i i'm gonna talk about this last i think you might be looking at it uh there are five different sizes for this so for those of you who speak sock pattern uh, the smallest size, extra small, it's a 56 stitch. And then for the extra large, it's 72 stitches cast on. Well, not cast on in this case, but you get what I mean. So it's like from 56 stitch sock pattern uh, up to a 72. Um, and then the sizes in between are like, you know, every four stitches. So 56, 60, 64, so on and so forth. Um, but you do not cast on those number of stitches because if you look um, at the top, there is some um, like lacy stuff going on here. So you need to cast on a little bit more so that you could do the bind off. It's kind of like a pico, right? A reverse pico because it's like up top instead of pointing down. Um, yeah, so you need to cast on a bit more so that you have enough stitches to um, decrease to make it like your standard sock stitches stitch counts if that makes sense um so it is constructed from the top down um and the here you go constructed from the top down you cast on x number of stitches and then you decrease and then you do this um ribbing which is special it's not just knit one pearl one because there are two different colorways uh used for that and then you do this you you knit down I'll talk about this in a second. And then <laughs> you do the, um, the heel. This is a heel flap and the heel flap, it's also slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one. But instead of, you know, keeping the slip one and the knit ones uniform, um, you vary it. So it's kind of like a seat stitch, but not knit one, pearl one, knit one, pearl one. It's like slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one, and then knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one. Make sense? And so it creates this pattern, which I like a lot. And then, you know, you do your regular gusset business. You do the foot and then here's the extra motif here. And then the round toe bind off, Kitchener stitch, you know, the whole nine yards. Okay, so this, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it, pronouncing it correctly. I think it's pronounced Rosemina something like that. Don't make fun of me, please. Um, it's an Estonian um, technique. Um, I have actually done a project using this technique before, this and this, uh, by another designer. It was a cardigan. Um, it was a lot of fun to do and it was not hard. I think the easiest way to explain this business, the, the Rose, Rose, Rosamina, I don't know, Google it. Uh, <laughs> uh, the easiest way to explain this technique is that is 
reverse uh, fair isle, reverse stranded color work knitting. So you know how when you are knitting fair isle on the right side, you know, you, you knit like, you know, you vary your color, but like the, 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 what do you call it? The floats, the floats happen in the back. It's hidden. But with this technique, it's the other way around. Um, the number of like the number of stitches of like the floats, if you will, um, is just like one or two stitches. So it's very, very small. I, I wish I was wearing that cardigan that used this technique so I can show you the difference. Um, but you could also make the floats longer on the right side of the work um, and to, to create that effect. So it's kind of like embroidery in a way. Um, some people explain it like that, that is like embroidery, but you don't actually take your tapestry needle to do the embroidery, but it kind of looks like that with really long um, length in between like point A and point B. Um, but to me, it's more like a, um, a reverse fair isle work uh, in a very tidy way, in artistic way. So if you haven't tried it before, give this pattern a try. Um, again, the, the links are in the description box. And uh, if there's a kit available, it will also be there. Um, you, there may be like different colorways. If this is too peachy for you, there may be other different colorways. Or you can just mix and match your own because the contrasting color, it, it's, you know, use your, you know, reserve, you know, your leftover yarns from previous uh, projects. You're not going to need much of it. Um, and then the main color, I would highly suggest that you use like a full skein, even though you're not going to need the full skein, but like, you know, you don't want to be, you know, playing yarn chicken at the end of the day. Um, so that's it. I have talked about all the patterns for today's episode. So I am going to say my farewell uh, here. Thank you so much for staying with me. Uh, this is the end of episode 13. It's been real, it's been fun. And if you are interested in casting on any of the projects that I talked about in today's episode and you're on social, then definitely hashtag us, this got yarns. Um, my social, I'm more active on Instagram. So if you want to follow me, I am at Yellow Cayenne. Um, and my handle on Ravelry is also the same at uh, Yellow Cayenne. So until next time, happy knitting and I will see you next week.